Hey there, and welcome back to Modded Monster Train. I hope you're all doing well today. I'm having a bit of a rough one. This week has sucked a lot. It's actually Friday night for me, which is nice. I'm going to have a weekend to kind of recoup a little bit, but uh, there's been a lot of like budget problems and just issues at work, so it, it kind of blows. But uh, in the same vein, it is always nice to get out and play some Monster Train at the end of the night. Uh, it is... 2 a.m. So unfortunately, I'm pretty exhausted. So sorry in advance. Hopefully I'm going to be thinking a lot through everything I do and don't make any horrible mistakes. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. I will try my best. And so yeah, that's where we're at. As far as what we're doing here today, we are playing a modded run. So the mod of interest is down here, the unofficial balance patch. It is a content drop that I personally maintain that is intended to smooth out the game's balance in response to feedback from, you know, the community intended for Covenant 25 gameplay. And essentially, high rolls are less high rolly, low rolls are less low rolly, basically. It's intending to make it so there's no bad cards and that there are no insanely OP cards either. There are, in the DLC, as many nerfs as there are buffs, honestly. So... Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I'm a big fan. It definitely represents some different content that I'm not as familiar with personally. Even though I made it, I've only got so many hours. So yeah, I definitely think that I actually think I struggle more in the balance patch and I have a lower win rate with it than with the base game. And, you know, speaking of lower win rate, our most recent run was a loss, sadly. So we are back on the zero and zero grind. And I know what you're thinking. This is the run here, by the way. It says victory, but it's because I reran the divinity just to kind of show you what I thought the winning line was. And we did hit the winning line. So I'm going to point out real quick what I think the two major issues here were. There's one that was a deck building error and one that was a tactical error. So first of all, I think I overvalued the modded version of ambient charge here yeah, by giving it frozen and I shouldn't have. It ended up being okay, but it's not as important as the other card I could have frozen here, which should have been Unleash the Wildwood. I was only lacking in raw HP for the Divinity Final Relentless plan, and if I had frozen Unleash the Wildwood instead, which I totally could have, then it would have been very clean and I would have won from that. And so that was a mistake, as a deck building mistake, for sure, on ring eight. The other issue is that I have three holdovers and an endless in this run. It was a cool run. I mean, we had, you know, Predator 1, Thornlord 2, Wendleton with a Keeper of Echoes infused into a Kinhos Vessel. It was pretty solid. And an endless Glugsider. So I'm glad he got his time to shine. He did well enough. But uh, the problem is this endless Glugsider with three holdover cards meant that I was only drawing two new cards a turn at the Divinity, so I never accelerated through my deck fast enough to see the Unleash the Wildwood quick enough. And so the tactical error is I should have dropped these holdovers, or at least a few of them, in order to move through my deck faster, is basically the gist of it. And I think if I had done that, I could have still won. And that is ultimately what kind of happened in the replay on the Divinity that got me this victory. So, you know... It is what it is. I'm calling it a loss, so we will run it back from the ground up and start our streak over. And that's about as much as I need to say there. So if we did Windle 10, that means we are dialing it back now to the Shardtail Queen. There is a modded path here that I'll explain if we see it and if it makes sense. I have tested it in the DLC, but it feels like it's maybe not as strong as it needs to be and if we run into it maybe we'll give it a try as long as it makes sense but we'll see if it makes sense or not I mean maybe I'll just play imperialist and it'll be much easier to run or something right so we'll see all right we have XL hellhorned random c25 no mutators all right let's go and see what we get Oh, all right, let's play some Monster Train. We have Exile Hellhorned with Default Umbra with Pushback Talos, Rage Arcus, and Patient Seraph, Fortify, Immortal Trade, and Battering Ram as our start. 
interesting with shade splitters. So, I mean, Fortify and Battering Ram is fine. Battering Ram is modded. It is two cost instead of three, and it pushes enemies to the back because it is a Battering Ram. It just makes thematic sense. So that's neat. This is a fine start. Immortal Trade's a great card to have, like, one of, and two of them is okay. Fortify is cheap. We're looking for Damage Shield and the Patient here. We'll see what we see. This is Umbra, so I'm never super excited for it, but it's not terrible. We'll start with the Horde. Hmm, Mark of a Champion or Scorching Restraints. Neither of these are incredible. The Queen is fine, but her, her attack stat never really gets that high by default. Let's pull it up real quick. Yeah, her attack stat is never particularly impressive, so I don't think it's ever Mark of a Champion. We'll just take Scorching Restraints. It'll make the early game a little cleaner. Ah, uh, we don't even see the modded path. Okay, so we are playing Imperialist, I guess. With only the Implings. Yeah, fair enough. I might consider changing Royalty a little bit. I think there's been enough discussions about it. I think it's bad enough that... Well, bad enough. I think it needs to hit more than once. That there may be some changes in the pipeline for it. We'll have to see. I have no backline except for Shardtail Queen. Which is spooky. I cannot take this horde. Not a chance. It, it would kill me. Yeah, we skip. We go 0-0 zero, zero into the first combat. It is a unit trial, which I feel great about taking. Yeah, this combat would have blasted me. There is a there is a crossbowman on here that would have just done 18 to me with no recourse. So yeah. Feels a little bad. Let's see. It's weird because I don't really have a great answer into the boss here. Maybe I just feed morsels to a train steward or something. I do think I want a Gartel Queen down here, though. And just blast this thing. I'll take HP morsel. Sure. I mean, yeah, I'll just blast everything on this floor. Cool. Brain Steward is good. I want to play the Impling. So, like... Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, this would have been okay with the... The 9-2, but I'm a little worried about the boss here. Like... That's a little spooky. Huh. Because this, this does not beat the boss right now. Not a chance. I could reasonably play this train steward here. It will kill this unit. And I could rubble morsel up here. I'm going to play this one here, killing that, and I'm going to rubble morsel here. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. I will put in this other magma morsel just in case I see another train steward. It's okay. Yeah, like... I'll play the armor on her. Sad to see the battering ram here, but it's fine. I'll play the morsel up top and create a floor up here, I think. Interesting. I think I do see another train steward. Yeah, I'll play this mid to get these benefits here. Cool. Imp down. Immortal trade, we're fine. Okay, fair enough. Thank you, Immortal trade. Very cool. I guess, could I have taken that horde with that draw order, maybe? It worked out. I'm taking a fledgling imp and you can't stop me. Oh man, the welder helper is so good, though. These are both excellent. The question you have to ask, oh, Hornbreak is also great. I would take all three of these cards if I could. So the question you have to answer is, with Shardtail Queen Imperialist, I want her killing an imp every turn. And if it's going to be one imp every turn, it's going to be welder helper. For sure. I could reasonably do it with the Fledgling Imp at a plus 25 on the thing. Right? I mean, that does get there. Also scale something in the back line, potentially. I do have Immortal Trade, and she does have pretty decent HP. I'm going to actually take the Fledgling Imp here. It lets me, it gives me an immediate plan for scaling, which I like. Space Prism is good. I forgot to mention, Welder Helper is nerfed in the mod. It is 15 armor instead of 20. It's a slight nerf. 
We see a changed card here. Ember Cash takes the place of Perils of Production in the common packs. It is a same as Ember Cash, but it does five damage blast a little bit, which is nice. It's a very good card here. No Prismal Dust, which I really wanted. Space Prism is just good, I think, though. What are my units? I'm seeing a Hellhorn Banner, so I'm just going to take Space Prism, and I'm not going to lean too hard into Morsels. I, as I say that, they show me Alloyed Construct, Shadow Eater, and Morsel Maker, all three of which are modded. Alloyed Construct and its infusions start with Fuel 2, so they're always useful. It's good, right? That's good. Shadow Eater says Sweep Gorge plus 4, a very different unit with its essence saying plus 10 health and Gorge plus 2. It basically, it normalizes this thing and makes it actually functional in a lot more runs. You, having a Sweeper in Clan is very nice. It overlaps with the Queen here, so I'm not going to take it, but it is good. I think there's winning lines with this. And then Morsel Maker is 1 Ember, down from 2, and it says Summon a Morsel Miner with Damage Shield 1. Very good, protected morsels. Alloyed Construct with Morsel Maker is a strong line. I can't take both. I don't think the Morsel Maker is correct, but if I do see a... I'm seeing a Hellhorn Banner. I don't have a great Morsel plan. Like, I am okay. I just have Shade Splitters. I don't think Alloyed Construct is it. I'm going to take the Morsel Maker, actually. Morsel Maker's Infusion is also different, right? It is just its card text. Some is the same thing. So it's pretty good. Go to the right, as I said. Version of Steel. Quick 5, 10, 10. Hellhorn Banner. Apex Imp. Let me look briefly. Apex Imp. I'm going to play Apex Imp here. Yeah, okay. So Apex Imp is modded. It's significantly nerfed, but I actually think it's really good still. So it says armored gain rage three, summon gain armor five. And because it has been nerfed, its infusion now says armor five and armored gain rage two. So you can self infuse it for a big buff if you're looking for rage five. Pretty good. I have the fortifies, which is excellent news. I didn't take the Welder Helper, sadly, but I can also just give it Rage from Fledgling Imp, which is fine. I'm going to click it. The other one is Horned Warrior, but, like, I want to show you that this unit still feels good, even when you don't have, like, you know, the obvious Stygian line, right? This makes Spell Chain Fortify really good, right? I even have the Battering Ram start. Interesting... I can't re-roll this. I'm going to put the quick into Apex Imp, though. I think that is going to be for sure good. Yeah. That's for sure good. The Infusion... I would like to see Steelworker, of course. That's the obvious choice, but there are some other good ones that I could see here. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot there. I don't know. Let's see. What I'm seeing an Umber Banner next, so I might not get great options here. This is my only temple pre Talos. Spell chain fortify is really exceptional though. Like I should take this. I'm okay going to 15 now that I hit that apex imp. We're fine with this. Yeah. The, the nice thing is if I see holdover, this fortify now represents what is it? Rage six and armor five for one ember. Can I take mark of invasion? Probably. Yeah, I think it's okay. At worst, it's like nine some damage there. Yeah, okay, I can play all my units. Thank you, one cost Morsel Maker. Very cool. Yeah. I need to be careful not to yeet Apex Imp, though, is my big concern here. So, like, don't put the queen on the floor is what that means, basically. The quick is good. I'll play her bottom. The thing is, is I need to... Yeah, he is a demon imp. Don't make that mistake. She is imperialist. They don't play nice. I'm going to put Morsel Maker up here. I think I need to think about the boss a little bit. Take the five on that. It's okay. 
I'll play queen bottom. She takes a good hit here, but it's okay. Take three. The morsel will tank, which is just fine. I can play a queen zimpling up here. She clears three. I don't get the collector. I think I could reasonably immortal trade downstairs and be fine with it. I haven't seen enough imps. That sucks. I mean, I did see one, but like, it's okay. I had to play it up top. Okay, we see multiple imps here, which is good news. Only one ember, though. I mean, I don't want to play it on the bottom anyway right now, so it's fine. Play that fledgling imp. It's good here. Feels solid. Damage shield imp, good. Yeah, this is like nothing I can do here at all. Cool. I'm going to take a shade splitter here. Put it in the back. Cleans up that redirector. Cool. Oh, cool. All right. I mean, she does 20, which is fine, I guess. We see the fortify, which is good news. See, like, it's so much more normalized with this. Like, it's not like he's going crazy high rolly, but it is nice that he's still playable. I mean, a 42? Damn it, he's got 16 rage, and I have, like, two armor cards in the deck. See another one? Like, he's fine, right? Yeah, he's fine. This actually does not look terrible, I suppose. Yeah, he gets through it. It's good. Thanks, Apex Imp. Very cool. I'm glad I get a chance to show you the Apex Imp. Yeah, we don't see the Welder Helper this time, sadly. Which means, in hindsight, I probably would have preferred Welder Helper here. But it's okay. I did at least spell chain that Fortify. I want to look for spell shops, find a holdover on that. Fortunately, I see one. I think the Molting Imp is going to be important as an Imp Infusion. It's going to be better than Ritual or Vent. Yeah, it's fine. Prismal Dust into Patient. Sign me up. Not even going to talk about the others. I go to the right. Show me a holdover. Umbra Banner. Crucible Collector Infusion? Crucible Collector is modded. He gains plus two health in addition to Lifesteal 1, which is pretty nice. He, he needs that HP scaling, I think. So that's good. I don't think that's the infusion, though. I also don't really want to infuse Morsel Maker into him because he doesn't really benefit from it at all, right? Morsel Maker is just kind of a tank in this case. Huh. I skipped this. Kind of, maybe. I could take Crucible Collector and put Morsel Maker inside of it. Interesting. It's not terrible, right? Have the imp in the back. That's so much that's such a big floor though, right? Um I think I get through this without that. I don't think the Crucible Collector is it. I, I'm gonna need a tank for my more my Apex Imp though, because I'm not I might not see something else. I do see a Merchant of Steel Hellhorn banner, but like, there are only so many good hits here for that, right? I mean, like, obviously Steelworker is the nuts, but you can't guarantee you see that, right? You can't force it. All of the other ones are offensive at this point. I guess Railbeater doesn't apply armor, though. Yeah, there's really nothing else good here, right? Umbra... Yeah, there's, there's really nothing else good as far as that goes. I think I will take this Crucible Collector, actually. What a weird run. I'm going to take the Horde here. Hell Pact. With Prismal Dust? Probably. It's better than the others. Yeah, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I can reroll this and sometimes hit the holdover that I can afford. Hell yes. Okay, we see it. 95 gold. Awesome. Perfectly affordable. Concealed Caverns. Glowing Brands. This is like the most unfortunate one at this stage. It's not bad, but it's not good. I mean, I always click Awoken here because it could just be Rage Adaptive Mutation. Stygian Guard is okay, but the rares are not what I'm looking for. Like it's what, Siren Song or something like that? That's not great. I'm going to click Awoken. 
I mean, I'm just going to take a Wilkins Rail Spike, right? It's X plus three. That's excellent. The HP is not it. Shard Channeler is not it. Shard Channeler is modded, though. His infusion says plus 15 health and spikes on friendly units deal plus one damage. So you could like self-infuse a shard channeler and get double the effect, which is pretty cool. It's certainly a lot more impactful than the other way around. I'm going to click Awoken's Whale Rail Spike though. It's just correct. It is a super free card here. And we move on. Should be fine. This floor is going to look really weird, by the way. Let's see, one, two, three, four. We have a space prism coming up. I can play her bottom. She's just gonna die, is the problem here, but it is fine. We do see turn one fortify though, which is just great news, I think. I only get the first one, but like, it's cool. If I redraw into this, it's still just good. It's actually not that bad, right? Kind of fun. Oh, she's just dead. It's cool. We get there. Great news. Don't play the Crucible Warden here, I guess. It's fine. Our top floor is actually looking pretty decent here. With that draw order. Right? Yeah, with that draw order, feels pretty good. That's still... I mean, that's a really good rage card, huh? Hmm. I think I do want to imp on bottom. I'm gonna take a slap here and there's just kind of no way around it. It will have to be okay. This is a cleaver though, right? Like he cleaves, so there's no reason to play the jeweler down there. I'm gonna put it into the queen then, fine. I could save 14 on Morsel Maker by playing the Immortal Trade. I think it's going to be fine, though. I don't need to. Sure. That is an unfortunate lineup. It puts our our buddy in front. He is kind of tanky, though, and he now gets the Morsel Miner, which is interesting. It's just correct to keep playing this, though, right? I don't actually mind this lineup, right? Oh, she goes back up. Oh, snap. What a roll. So he gets pushed to the back again? Interesting. Ah, uh, we lose our queen. She's not that important at this point. Rage Imp up top is excellent. There's the floor. And he does get pushed back still, which is excellent news. I cannot save the queen unless I hit a... I'm going to click it. Oh, I can't. I can save the queen. Do I want to save the queen? Not really. I'd rather put 6 HP into our boy. Yeah, our top floor is what matters here now. Cool. Goodbye, queen. Nice knowing you. Just give me that fortify. Battering ram this man for 204. It's not important. I'm gonna play the rail spike at five though. It draws me all of these cards. That's pretty good, right? That feels pretty strong. It doesn't matter if I encant him damage shield. Sure, I'll just do Let's play cards, I suppose. Take the three damage shield into the Morsel fellow. Heck, I can even toss him this lifesteal and he's just indestructible here. Cool. Cool, we win. Awesome news. See, like, I mean, with a decent plan, he still gets up to 110. 110? Pretty reasonable, I think. I think that is a very reasonable setup. Yeah, we easily clobber here. He doesn't get through. Take a ton of life steal. I could even play the Crucible Warden if I felt like it, but we're, we're fine. He's getting there. He requires some effort, and he's not good at duping, but it's fine. We see Forever Consumed, Spike of the Hellhorn, and Furnace Tap. So two X-Costers with my first Hell Pact 
Forever Consume is modded. It does 40x instead of 30. It's a much better ratio for the scaling on its damage, which is nice. Makes it feel like a rare card, right? Whereas Spike of the Hellhorn is modded. It has 5x armor. Now, it's worth noting that as good as this is, this Spike of the Hellhorn, it is only one proc of the Apex Imp armor trigger. So this does not represent like 500 rage and then an auto victory anymore. Which, you know, that's fine. It is what it is. Is there... Where can I do a hell vent here? It's kind of my next question. Where's my next hell vent? Because I, I think a self-infuse here is probably the way to go. It's way down here, ring seven. Yeah, but I can do the dupe self-infuse and that's fine. I'm going to take the... Oh man, it's tough. These are both excellent. This is just a 120 damage for zero forever consumed. Whereas this... Spike of the Hellhorn represents a ton of rage and armor at zero. I'm going to take Forever Consumed, I think, because it's going to help me more, probably. It's going to represent another heavy dead. I can give it piercing, and this thing is great. I'm going to take the Forever Consumed, yeah. Just all Umber units. Shadow Eater, Morsel, Master, and Crucible Collector. I could reasonably... Self-infused, Morsel Maker, Morsel Master, but I don't think that's it. This Morsel Maker might just stick around as a tank, though. He's pretty good summoning those imps, right? I mean, those uh, Morsels. I don't. Th I think there's two infusions in my future: a self-infuse on the Apex Imp and a an Imp infusion with Endless, like molting into Fledgling here. I skip this. It's fine. I don't need these. I'm going to 100% need space on this run somewhere. Yeah, I am. Do I need it now is the real question. I'm always bending one ember every turn on this fortify, which is great. That is just great, right? So an ember, ember is value here. do have this Awoken's Rail Spike, right? I think it's actually maybe draw. I go to the Steel Shop. Maybe they show me something decent here. Take some removals. I don't know if I needed to take this, like, this Crucible Collector. Right? Like, my thought line, my line of thought here is I put this in front of the Queen and it lives. Alternatively, I could put this in front of Apex Imp and put the Morsel Maker in front of the Queen. Basically, I need to keep the Queen alive because I did not take the initial Welder Helper that they showed me. My original thought process was plus 25 Endless on this Fledgling Imp, but I can't play the Apex Imp with the Queen because she yeets it. Because thanks, why does Apex Imp exist as an Imp unit? I just don't get it. He should just be a demon. Maybe I should make that change. It only changes this functionally. I might do that. That's really annoying that it behaves this way. There's no good reason for it either. It's not like she's too broken, right? Oh no, Chartel Queen's too strong. We can't let her play with Apex Imp? Question mark. All right, anyway, let's see. All of these are good for different reasons. I think I could realistically get away with... I think I should take space now. Yeah, I'll take space. I think this is going to be correct in the end. We'll go left here. Steel shop. I see the forgotten boon, so I don't feel too bad. Yeah, fine. Show me a multi-strike. Oh, wow. Yeah, multi-strike onto my apex imp. Don't mind if I do. Wow. Like, demon fiend is playable at three ember, right? That's pretty cool. And then rail beater has a custom infusion. Apply melee weakness one to the front enemy unit on action. It, it, it's on action because otherwise, you know, in this example, I put it into Apex Imp. He sets up his own attack and then he sets up the attack for the next round. And it's you can't put this strike into this, right? It's especially egregious on like sweepers. But with action, it's fine. The only thing that really takes advantage of this brutally is anything with trample. It's still good, though, right? I've used it before. 
the rail beater is otherwise unimpressive, I think. I could put... Hold up. I could put Morsel Maker into that. But I don't think I want to do a triple infusion on this run. I could have it on the floor. I don't think that's it either. I, I don't think these are it. I'm going to skip them. I think I have enough units. And it's just going to be fine. Spell Chain and Piercing. I'm going to put the Piercing into Forever Consumed. Like I said, this is now a Piercing 120 for zero, which is exceptional. I guess, well, I guess 130 for zero. Yeah, that's excellent. And no infusion right now. If I had Endless, I would do this, but I don't. I could reasonably... I should really Morsel Maker into Crucible Collector here. How strong am I? Can I do that? My ring seven is for sure the Apex Imp infusion. I mean, I do have this quick multi-strike Apex Imp here. He is excellent. Can I go 65 on this? I can if I do Morsel Maker into Crucible Collector here. So he always spawns a protected morsel, which gives him lifesteal and tanks. And it reduces my draw confusion. I'm going to do this. This is fine. This is a lot of shards, but I think I have to do this now. They sell me royalty. It's never royalty. Just give me stats and imperialist too, please. I need to protect this queen because she's going to be an important part of my run. So I'm going to be looking for things there. Yeah, this is a fine combat for this. I can take the money too. Queen matters here, by the way. Three enemies. I only hit twice. I mean, I do have some other answers, right? I have the battering ram and the forever consumed. So this is okay. It's a little tricky. A little tricky. Yeah, like... Train steward, queen... Apex Imp up top. Give him the Fortify. Fine. Okay, we see Morsel Maker now, which is good. I play him up top, which is great news. I need to play an Imp down bottom for sure. The Rage is nice because she actually clobbers here. And then we Rail Spike. It's fine. I can tank with the train steward on bottom. That's just good news. I can play a shade splitter as well up top. And not playing a forgotten trade here. Yeah, it's fine. I lose the collector. It's okay. I had a feeling I might. I could have reasonably played her top, but I don't think it's correct. Yeah, like here's the problem. I do double hits here, but I'm not actually killing. Put this Queen Zimpling up. tough man it's tough i think i have to play the imp on bottom in order to yeet it or else i don't win i'm gonna take the shade splitter here we do put 25 into the back line due to that though which is good news thanks to the scorching restraints so i take one hit for 11 which sucks but it's fine Play the Queen's Impling. It has to go bottom. I need to be throwing this. Yeah. Take Shade Splitters. I need to draw my Fortify, please. Interesting. I should kill this Clipped Defender actually really important. I could see it with the uh, an imp, imp next turn, but there is a world I draw everything but the imps. Well, then I get the forever consumed. I think I'm going to be okay. So I can just play these morsels up top, feed my man, and then train steward bottom to tank and prismal dust up top. We'll put it on the imp in the back because we have lifesteal in front. Yeah, fine. Show me Fortify and an Imp, please. Yikes. Bottom decking. Bottom decking. It's 
off. We do see Battering Ram, though, which is enough. Cool. Play another unit. I'm going to... I'm just going to blast this thing in the middle. May as well 170 piercing. We clear it. I now see actual armor cards. So this density of this is a problem, right? The density of this is a problem. Get Immortal Trade here and then Yeet and Imp and this is more damage. Yeah, fine, cool. Cool. She does some damage here. It's fine. We take one curse, no biggie. Shame to see the Battering Ram like this, but it's okay. Just play armor card every turn. Once you see that, it feels much better. I need to remove cards then. Like, that is bad. Wow. 290 damage? Sure. Get out of here, bud. That that floor looks durable and effective. I just need more imps. More imp cards that with consume. Are all my consumes really good? This impish scholar is excellent then. It's just what? Rail spike, prismal dust, and I guess the space prism. Just fine. That's good. Yeah, I'll take an impish scholar. Sure. Caven is modded. Actually, you know, I forgot to tell you, Rage Serum is modded. I didn't notice it at first, but it applies Rage to the floor and not Rage to one unit, which is good. Caven is modded, Ember Drain 1 to friendly units, Days 2 to enemy units. It's a really good survivability line. Helps a lot with things like Patient. It gives an answer that Umbra desperately needs here, but it's not for this run. I have the Lifesteal with... Protected Morsels and Prismal Dust. Kindle's modded. It's no longer X cost. This card was pretty high rolly in, you know, with this exact scenario. First Hell Pact with, you know, two minus ones or two minus twos in it. You could generate Ember out of nothing. And it was pretty intense. Kindle, however, now is a one cost permafrost double current ember card which caps out the value you get from ember and caps out the value you get from first hell pact it also makes it an uncommon swap places with void binding so i don't need these here it's fine now i don't need this steel shop i just kind of hit i would eventually take some plus 25s in the crucible collector buddy over here but it doesn't really matter so I'm going to go to the magic shop with the removals. I think that's high value. Take out some of these train stewards. They're the worst cards. Every removal is big value here. Yeah. Every removal is pretty huge. Remove consume. I mean, I could just remove consume this prismal dust at this stage, right? And then... Oh, wait. Do I just have an infinite? Hold up. Impish Scholar. Impish Scholar, X plus three Awoken's Rail Spike. What do I need to do the infinite here? It's just, assuming I remove enough cards, at this point it's just I need to play the Imp multiple times. So all I need is like, important work. Important work does it. I guess I could do it with just like, anything that does immediate damage to the Imp too, like a Dark Deal, right? You Dark Deal the Imp, it's endless, you play Awoken's Rail Spike, you draw Imp, you play Imp, you also redraw Dark Deal, you kill Imp after playing it to get back Awoken's Rail Spike, and then the infinite is what? I put Fledgling Imp into the Impish Scholar and I scale Infinite Rage? I mean, that exists, right? That is a thing? Wow. Okay, I, I technically have an infinite as an option here. I didn't even think about it. I need to remove a lot of cards to get to that point though, right? And I can't play any of these other consumers at this stage. It's a little ambitious. 29 cards in my deck. How many removals do I have? And I would need to see a ping. Like, I don't have a ping here at anywhere, so I have to draft one. Interesting. Interesting. 
could remove consume on this prismal dust and it's just great news i don't i never feel bad playing this multiple times yeah it's strong if I re-rolled here and saw what another holdover, what would I put it on? The other fortify? No, that's too much. The spell chain is a better approach. I think a minus one in a battering ram, I think. I would hold over forever consumed, actually. Right? I'm gonna do that. If I buy this, I go to 145. I can take the money. Yeah. This plus 10 is not it. I'm gonna re-roll. It's not a holdover, so I don't care. The minus one just now goes into Prismal Dust. It's fine. Just three damage shield whenever I draw it. Pretty good. Yeah, sure. I don't see a world where I need to do anything too crazy. I guess I do have the double stack. I could double stack this Prismal Dust now. Is that good? X plus one with double stack? Holy crap, that's actually an insane amount of damage shield, right? Wow. Wow, okay. The interesting thing about this Apex Imp here is that it's never going to be duped because I'm pumping armor into this thing. When I self-infuse it, it gets another burst on start because of the armor five, and it's going to gain five armor on armored kind of interesting. Do I take this double stack here and make this prismal dust insane? Maybe. 75. I self-infuse on ring 7. That's 100 right there. It's tough because I guess I should be looking for endless on an imp, right? I almost lost sight of that. Huh. Yeah, the left would have been okay for the endless on an imp only. I will go to Matt the Steel Shop. So I'm gonna go to this next steel shop pretty much no matter what. Which means I should take money no matter what. I think I should take money no matter what, right? Under 80 is important here. Is this good enough? That is a really strong prismal dust for what it's worth. This does answer patient outright. Yeah, okay, fine. You've convinced me. I convinced myself. Let's move. All right. I need... Yeah, this is... It's important for this, too. Spell shield. Well, the only spell shield I really have here is... Battering Ram. So I don't super mind here. Because, you know, the Forever Consumed has piercing. It's a good fledgling imp, right? Yeah, I'm going to play Morsel Friend up top. Cool. Play Queen on bottom. It's no problem. She does get overrun here, but I'll put Molting Imp down. And then Queen Zimpling. And they yeet. It's fine. That floor is now dead. Let's see... A good yeet. I have to play Apex Imp up top, no question. The only question is if I have Shade Splitter up top and give up the collector, or if I Queen Zimpling bottom. I took this I took the spell shield here. I think I should respect this combat somewhat because I have not scaled yet. To do that, I play the Queen Zimpling on bottom. And this Yeet provides some value. We give up our friend. Yeah, 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 this is correct. It looks a lot better once I actually draw into... Here, you can kind of get a taste of it, right? Oh, well, it's interesting because I can't actually do it here, right? Yeah. Huh. Well, we save the queen. And we kill the, with the imp. And I forever consumed middle. For sure. Opens that up. And now I awoken's rail spike. Cool. Take this up top. It's fine. 
it would be really good to get this immortal trade in, but she never swings on this floor, so it's kind of just what it is. I'm going to lose her. There's no way around it. Yeah, no way around it. I will... Fledgling Imp up top. Gets, it gets killed and kills, which is important. I need to... I think I'm going to Queen Zempling bottom and just accept the extra 10 armor on this overcharged tank. Like, I get it. It's not great, but it kills that front dude, which is a real concern. I'm guaranteed to see something good next turn. Just don't bottom card fortify again. I could push this marksman to the back. I don't think I want to. It mathematically works out. I would rather like a 28 go into this marksman and then the 48 from the collector. It's kind of funny, right? Yeah, all right, we skip it. We're fine. Cool, all right. All right, we at least see fortify. Jeez. And then I put four damage shield into into the person. Yeah, I'm going to put four damage shield into Crucible Collector here. I realize he has lifesteal, but this is really for the boss. And I'm going to redraw now. Hopefully I see it again. Cool. If I play this morsel, we maybe get there. We're pretty darn close. Tough, right? We are close. So feeding that extra armor is a was bad. Yeah, it's tough. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to battering ram her to the back for zero. I'm going to play the Queen Zimpling. And then I'm going to play the train steward. We take six here. It's just it is what it is. Fine. I need to play armor. Armor, Shade Splitter, Shade Splitter. Let's see. I'm going to always put the Imp on bot mid to kill this dude, for sure. Eight rounds. The more lifesteal I have up top, I feel comfortable. Maybe I draw something really good. I think this is fine. We have nine lifesteal. Yeah, we're cool. We're very cozy. This is actually really strong. Huh. 10 damage shield, 9 life steal. I mean, yeah, we just kind of chug through this, right? Cool. Yeah, fine. Fair enough. Take that 6, unfortunately. Fire Chomper. At this point, like, I just need a Transcend Imp. It's hard to say no to Pyre Chomper. I really ought to click it. Oh, yeah, okay. Ah, Perils of Production in my Uncommon pack. Pretty good, right? Pretty good. Excavation Eruption is also modded. It is 15 damage instead of 20. And it says damage a random enemy unit four times instead of three. Brings it back a little more flavor. Otherwise, it just kind of feels like a weird version of Ice Tornado. I don't think it's Ember Drain here. It is kind of free because I can always put it into the Morsel Maker Morsel, right? At worst. I don't need I don't want to take cards though, is really the concern I have. Especially if I have to go to this merchant of steel. But the ember is value. Ugh, I don't know. You know, I forgot to mention it. Pyre Chomper's modded. Its effects, its infusion says summon gain four ember instead of minus four, like a weirdo. I'm going to skip this. I can just lean into Pyre Chomper if I need the value there. Yeah, we'll go left here. I realize the removals are juicy, but I do want to look for an endless. A plus 25, huh? I'll put that in a Crucible Collector. It's good. Yeah, sure. I will quick re-roll this. Yeah. Endless. Awesome. Cool. All right. So we totally see it. I see a plus 25 endless imp. So now I need to think, what do I want to be endless? Is it what I said 
Fledgling Imp with sc Impish Scholar. Or is it Fled? Oh no, it's Impish Scholar with Pyre Chomper. Because the thing is, is the Fledgling Imp wants to go on top floor. But I don't want him to be endless on top floor. I need that endless for the bottom floor imp. Yeah, hold up. We put the endless into our boy and pyre chomper here. Doesn't really matter the order I go, right? They are the same either way. Return a random consume spell to hand, gain four ember. Yeah, so in this case, I'm going to just put the endless into pyre chomper because he looks cooler. He's got that big de belly, he eats things. Yeah, cool. I put plus 25 into the Pyre Chomper now. Actually, what's better? Plus 25 or Damage Shield 3? Gotta be Damage Shield 3. Later game, this is just so much value. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. And then I do the infusion now, and this makes our queen very potent. Scholar into Pyre Chomper, and basically now I draw my entire deck. Right, every time I do this, the only thing I pull back is Awoken's Rail Spike every single turn. And I just pump Pyre Chomper's entire Ember into an Awoken's Rail Spike. That's insane! I love this. This is very, very good. Hell yeah. I don't mind going to 100 here because that is a humongous power-up. Caverns, Minor Refraction, or I could make the Imp huge. He's huge! Is that good? I mean, he only gets yeeted once, though, so it's not that great. I have the space for it, though, right? Which is funny. Minor Refraction in a Collector. If I did a Minor Refraction in anything, it would be Apex Imp, right? Just make him tiny. This floor, I already took space though, right? I already took space. And if I put the major refraction into the scholar, he tanks like a god, right? And I have, what, three space on the floor with the queen? I can put one more imp behind for an 80 damage throw. It's pretty darn good, right? That's pretty darn good. This dude is a lord. He never dies. What's better here? This is actually interesting, right? Because I also have a space prison to play with that theoretically could be brought back with my endless pyre chomper. So it's kind of interesting because now I can like get more space where I need it. I think it's the major refraction because it means my queen actually never dies. This thing is too strong and he looks cool. Look how big this dude is going to be. Yeah, hell yeah. He is now a behemoth. Well, that was fun. I don't need these things. I'm going to self-infuse on ring 7, so I go to 125, and then I chill. Right? I chill. Yeah. 100 shards in a ring 6? Pretty aggro. But I feel much stronger with that hit. Like... Yeah. Apex Imp. Queen, Molting Imp. I'm going to put the Queen's Impling behind so she throws it. Kind of a crappy turn one upgrade, but we're going to get a lot of really bad upgrades here. All right, we see the big unit. Look at this dude. He is like indestructible and then gets yeeted. Look how big this Imp is. I'm in love. I am in love, and I cleanly get 8 damage shield here now, which is unbelievable. I don't even care that I got that, right? I just play this imp buddy down again. It brings back space prism. Wow. I need to... I could just sack this queen's impling, right? I mean, I do know it dies, but it's fine. I don't really care because it actually kills this dude. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Sure. 
kills him. I now Shade Splitter bottom and then bring it up top and put it in this guy. I kill a Train Steward mid. This is looking pretty juicy. No lie. I'm gonna Space Prism again on bottom this time. Cool. I just need to, once I get to the point where I see armor, like I need armor. Oh, you want a 360 damage, huh? How about 290 in the Arcus there? Pretty good. My Apex Imp is bad because I haven't seen my armor. Yeah, I haven't seen my armor. Cool, and I have to actually put armor onto her, the queen. We have seen armor now. We are activated. Armor into queen, and then I'm also going to play the immortal trade into her so she gets some HP back here. We just send trains through the middle. Cool. That is good. It's a good approach there. All right, here we go. We we see it. Now, fortify up top, just build up armor as best of my ability. I am a fool. I didn't count my ember. Oh. That is an unbelievable throw. I lose queen for the... Oh, I saved the queen, actually. Oh, wow, that's lucky, right? Six, ten, ten. Yeah, okay, fine. All right, I can redraw him. I can redraw him. It's not a throw yet. I can redraw him. Yeah. I was so, so, much, so thinking about the stupid... Ugh, that's, that sucks. I was too... I was thinking too hard about i can play this morsel right yeah fine take another six for that though shame cool like i would have drawn an answer there i take six for my my what is it disrespect i'm not looking terribly strong up top it's okay though i have a lot of damage shield so i don't really mind i'm gonna take damage in arcus where i can get it yeah Cool. I need to take draw here. I have enough ember for the world. Yeah, yeah. I think we're still fine even with that throw. I'm going to have to get used to the play style of this setup. We have so much survivability. Yeah, it's just fine. Wow, you know, I didn't even realize the fledgling imp had survived. I'll just take 10 damage shield here. That's enough to win. Yeah, okay. So, our imp... Not looking terribly impressive right now because I, I the draw order is tough and I have a lot of holdover cards. Transcend Imp is a game winner though. Or I could just take Last Stand. Oh my gosh, right? Return Consume Last Stand? What the hell? Transcend Imp is good, but like... It's not actually that good, right? I'm just... It would just be Infinite Ember... I'd have the biggest stack of Prismal Dust ever to exist. I'm going to take Last Stand here. Hell yeah. That scales me fast enough. I need to draw cards very badly. I have enough Ember for the world now. Yeah, fine. I go to the right now. Yep. It's like the best trio of things. I can see removals into these train stewards for sure. It's good to get rid of them. I can look at this horde. Shade Lamp is great. I'll take it. Morsels into my Collector Buddy. Hell yeah. Forge. Just give me Imperialist 3. Yeah. I don't need to... I see Imp Parade. I'm not even going to explain it because the card text gets kind of crazy when you mix them. I'm just going to take Imperialist 3 here. I'll explain that Imp Parade when, uh, when the opportunity makes sense. Spell Chain... Oh boy, right? This is risky. 
this is very risky. I mean, this is this is potentially too much. I'm flying too close to the sun here. This is close to just being out of control. Like spell chain last stand is an unbelievable amount of rage whenever I want it on my backline, dude. But like the problem is the problem is he hits two units to death. So I need to rely on other things. Is there ever a world where I can play two Apex Imps with that last stand hit, huh? I just spread the armor out and then I play last stand repeatedly. I think I always dupe this, this dude, right? I can actually fit them all on the floor, right? Two Apex Imps and then the Morsel Maker Crucible Collector. As long as I draw the Imps first. Huh. The main problem is Top Floor Divinity hurts a lot. I do have a ton of Prismal Dust as long as I actually draw it. We're flying a little close to the sun here is my main concern. Right? I think spreading out is bad. Yeah, I think spreading out is bad. I'm going to self-infuse. I don't do I need to self-infuse the Apex Imp actually? With that with that last stand hit. Maybe not. Right? Just I mean, at this point it's just scale faster. If I don't take that, then what do I dupe? It should be something. Might be just forever consumed. Just a really big good blast. Good card. It could never be Impish Scholar, friend. I think uh, that does not work correctly the way I want it to. It's good, but I don't need that much Ember for anything. Like, I already have enough. Hmm... Could be battering ram i will generate enough armor that it will just kill an enemy but if it's going to be battering ram it should just be forever consumed because with first hell pact it's just going to be enough to kill a bad it's going to be enough to kill a dude it's probably this and i just go to 105. i think the apex imp self infuse mattered more before i saw the last stand right I don't need this last pyre hell vent. The removals are probably more valuable. I just remove some shade splitters at this point, right? Yeah. Once you get through the deck, it's like, what do I actually have in my deck, right? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen cards. Once I draw through once, lost luggage would be really good here. I'm going to dupe the Forever Consumed. I think this is super correct. It does put me at 105, but this card answers the enemies that I'm dealing with right now. It just answers one of them whenever I need it to, which is exceptional. And I think I'm going to need this. I think everything else doesn't matter. It would have been the Self-Infused Apex Imp, but then I saw Last Stand. So I'm going to lock it in. Forever Consumed is good here. 105, and we chill. No more shards. Yes. I realize I could have like spell chained it and made, then duped it and then it would just like kill four things or something. But like, I think that's a bit spooky. Conduits is horrifying with this plus eight. I think I have to play queen mid to survive. Does this kill me? It might. That turn one could just end me. I think it's fine though. There is a draw. There are draws that kill me, but you know, it's never never punished, I guess. Play the imp. Imp does actually die in an amazing turn of events. How much damage is he taking? 18, 13, 13. So that's 31. 44 damage, huh? I mean, I, I always get through it with the Forever Consumed here, so I don't care that much. I'll armor up the Queen then. Let me just 
blow away the dude in front. Take the morsels up top, fine. And then, yeah, he's fine. He gets yeeted. No problem. We, it's clean now. It is now good, just fine. Pyre Chomper, get him. It's a lot of incoming damage. Wow. Morsel, Apex M. Start the armor scaling here. Very good. Play a Queen Zimpling in front to tank a hit here. Close. I'm going to take this Awoken's Rail Spike, see what I draw into. It's pretty good. It's pretty solid. I do not yeet here, which is unfortunate. Imp, imp. It's fine. I'll take a Shade Splitter, I guess. Yeah, sure. Sadly, the Pyre Chomper does get chewed through, but this is an insane amount of damage on this floor, so it's fine. He just dies. Yeah, fine. It is acceptable. Pyre Chomper, get him. He just gets killed again. It's kind of crazy, actually, the amount of incoming damage here. Yeah, wow. Okay, so I can just play a Mortal Trade into Morsel Miner here because I don't want to take that. I'm going to play my armor card. I'll stick another excavator up top here. I will throw away the Shade Splitter's middle. Fine. There's a lot of things I could draw here that are really good. Yeah, I'm going to play the Queen Zimbling in back here so it always gets thrown and cleans up this otherwise horrifying floor and then just replay Awoken's Rail Spike to draw my entire hand. Yeah, that's pretty solid, huh? Space up top, take the other Shade Splitter. Take two Prismal Dust, sure, why not? Start by putting it in the... Put it in the back, I think, it's fine. And now I can actually save... I don't do enough damage. I'm gonna forever consume middle. Yeah, fine. Fine, totally good. Our poor boy, the Pyre Chomper, is doing his job. He is keeping the queen standing and just giving me a blessed amount of damage. Just play all my armor here, very good. It's a really good fledgling imp up top, I believe. Yeah, it is. Really good fledgling imp up top. Take it. I'll also take attack stat here. Every bit counts. It's a really good molting imp as well. I'll play it in back in case it eats. Yeah, it eats. Great news. Just play imps and play stuff middle. For, it's fine. It's fine. We just take another draw six. This is excellent. Fortify again. And because it hit with Awoken's Rail Spike, the spell chained copy is now free. I mean, this looks really good, right? It looks really good when you put it like, oh no, I saved my imp. Ah, because of the quick. I am a fool. It's fine. I don't know. At this point, I don't really care. I got too excited. I flew too close to the sun. I love this. This is nice. Just feed my imp. He's too strong. Draw eight cards. My entire deck is now free. Almost. I can almost play last stand. It's cool, because I will draw around into it again. No problem. What a weird run. Sure, whatever. Feed my imp, I guess. It's fine. None of this stuff matters. We, I feel really strong here. And like, I probably should, right? Good, she eats the imp. I'll take the space prison here. Hell yeah. Sure. Play morsels into my man and then take, I don't know, 16 damage shield seems okay. Like, 
That's a good number, right? That is a good number, yeah. Alright, cool. I mean, she's doing a pretty good job here too, right? Just thanks to the existence of that lifesteal. Sure. I no longer get my Imp of Destiny. It's fine. I don't think I need him anymore. We're good. We're good. I should be able to end turn up top. Yeah, fine. I can even play last stand at long last. I didn't get a chance to really do the last stand shenanigans I wanted to here, but it's fine. It is okay. I mean, we have patient stands no chance. I'm drawing through my deck really fast. Oh, we see the modded in flame. Apply rage 14 and dazed one to a unit. It can be used defensively and offensively. Imp in a box is a bit nutty if I hit really well. Just, you know, give me a transcend imp and it's over. But I kind of don't want to play more consume cards here. Like, imp in a box is actually free, though. I should do this. I should take imp in a box. It's too strong. I skip these. None of them are modded. Yeah. I mean, prism retrieval is not bad. It is an X cost card. It replaces itself. Yeah, fine. Prism Retrieval, get in here. Great, we go left. I've taken so many cards, but a lot of them just replace themselves. And thanks to the Awoken's Rail Spike, it's kind of out of control. So that's cool with me. Remove Consume. Don't think that's it. I don't know. You're going to need to show me something crazy for me to consider value out of these shards here. Oh, unbroken horn it's not unbroken horn i'll tell you that might be golden vault i want to do minus one minus one into last stand so when i bring it back it is easier to play no consume add to cards it actually might be good to remove consume on cards like no i don't want to though problem is i, I can't play some of these when i redraw them that's okay this minus one, minus one is really good here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just great news. That frozen is tempting. I'm going to remove what? Probably two shade splitters with that shade lamp hit. Like they're okay, but they fill my floor. and They're not what I want to be drawing. It's not a bad card, right? It's not a bad card. It's either that or, I mean, Immortal Trait is better than Shade Splitter, though, so. Yeah, fine. Remove, remove. Merchant of Trinkets, I will re-roll this. I don't think it's Golden Vault here. I'll take the removals. I haven't spent any money on them. Fossilized Fangs. Double Gorge is really good on this dude, right? Ton of HP. Big stats, right? The problem is, we don't have protected morsels for top floor divinity outside of this dude's own morsel, right? The morsel maker morsel is protected because it has damage shield one. That is a little spooky, right? It is a bit spooky. I could theoretically armor them up or give them damage shield or something, but I don't think that's going to be it. The divinity is going to be the real problem here. And it's really just going to come down to consistency, I think. So these Shade Splitter ones are just kind of dead to me. Yeah, just buy Shade Splitters. Removals. These are really good. Vapor Funnel is nice if I leak anything, which may happen. I think I want to buy Vapor Funnel and Fossilized Fangs here. Fossilized Fangs is good because it means that he only needs to eat his one morsel. Right, he only needs to eat his one morsel. And then he gets two lifesteal. And he lives longer. Because I wouldn't normally care, except for the fact that I don't think I'm going to be able to get him to eat a lot. And I'm going to need a pretty insane turn one draw if I want to pivot to a mid-floor solution here. Which would be ideal, I think. I, I think mid-floor is ideal. But man, I don't think I can set up that fast unless I just hit like crazy or remove a million cards. 
What would I permafrost? Is there anything I would permafrost that has more value? I could permafrost battering ram, but like, why? Permafrost awoken's rail spike, but why? No, I don't think it's it. My money is better spent over here. I could... What's more useful to me? Removing a bunch of trash? What am I getting down to when I redraw, right? It's like... One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight... Nine, technically. Ten? I mean, it's like nothing. It's like nothing. Actually. I can almost do an infinite here. If I had gone right, I think I actually could have done an infinite. It's kind of weird to think about. I think I want to remove a card. Remove the Shade Splitter from the pile is really strong here. And then I buy one of these. Fossilized Fangs is trivialized. I mean, Patience already trivialized. I have that damage shield, which is out of control. Vapor Funnel is really nice for the Divinity. If Queen falters, I think I need to buy Vapor Funnel at least. Now the question really just kind of comes down to, do I need Fossilized Fangs? I don't think so. Right, lock it in. Any lifesteal he gets, I can give it to him from like... Immortal Trade, and he'll live. I would love to scale his HP here, but... Truly, removing the Shade Splitter seems like it would be more valuable to me. So I just hit more armor, hit my cards faster. Yeah, I'm going to lock that in. 130, can I do anything with that? I'll take a plus 10 into Forever Consumed. One. I guess I could freeze something. What do I freeze then? What would I freeze? Forever Consumed? Battering Ram is probably the best one here, so I can always just, like, obliterate something. Battering Ram is it, right? This is how you answer a mini-boss if you haven't scaled yet. Yeah, okay, we'll do this. And then I'll buy the plus 10 and do a, a Forever Consumed, sure. And we're chilling. 105 out of 100 into Patient. I think Patient is going to be a joke. Like, I'm so not worried about Patient here. As long as I don't, like, just get God on turn one or something. Like, I, I don't, right? There's just no fear. Yeah, no fear. It's Queen Bottom with Pyre Chomper, who lives. I play Queen Zimpling, and I just incant the hell out of this dude, and I just don't care. Yeah, it's gonna have to be fine. Apex Imp and Crucible Collector, and then I just feed this dude, like, a damage shield morsel, and we're fine. Cool. Cool. Seems good to me. And now, like, if he decides to melee weakness up top, I just don't care because there's always the miner in front. Molting Imp is important here. Right. Good. Imp's middle. They'll bait a little bit, which is excellent news. I guess I'll play this Prism Retrieval to create the final Imp. There's no reason to play it now. I can actually play it on my Pyre Chomper later. Sure, 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 it's fine. Like, this should be fine here, right? Yeah, he goes mid. I don't care about this floor one bit. Yeah, here we go, here we go. We're looking at it here. I'm going to start the last stand nonsense. Sure. It looks really bad right there. But that's okay. Because I can immediately do it again. And I can take 10 damage shield here. I am going to play the Space Prism here. One Space Prism is big value. What am I more afraid of? I will draw around again. I don't think I need this 10 damage shield here to win. So I'm going to put it on Queen because I think she's more important, right? Yeah. We actually kill the Light Wings, which is great. And I can now kill the bottom dude, which is excellent. Yeah, so the floors are cleared, which is wonderful news. 
Yeah, like, look at this. Morsel just eats it. Great news, Morsel friend. We get last stand back. Yeah, like, I can just incant him. I don't care. Last stand. I mean, we're gonna get there. I don't need to play anything else here. Imp in a box is gonna be good for other stuff, but I just wanna play the last stand every turn now. Yeah, fine. It's my offensive scaling line. I will miss it eventually, but it's gonna be okay. Yeah, because that's base prism, but it's fine. I guess I'll, oh, he dies, wow. I will throw Queen Zimpling then. Sure, it's a good yeet. Play Morsel, Morsel up top now, and then Rage Imp. I do that to keep the Queen Zimpling alive. I do not play Space Prism again. I just obliterate this man on bottom. No, I'm gonna obliterate the man in front. Yeah, I'm gonna kill this dude. And then play Lifesteal up top. Morsel mid. Easy. Good turn. Like I said, I think Patient is just free here. Take Rage where I can get it. That's a good battering ram, but I don't really care. Yeah, so here we do Impish Scholar. Double Rage. We're at a point where this is very strong. I need Life Steal into the Miner just so I don't have it in my hand. I want to draw seven cards now and make them all free. Sure, why not? They don't do anything, but this basically means my next draws suck a little less. I can just Prism Retrieval for free here. Oh, it's unfortunate because it's a consume, right? I shouldn't have done that. It's interesting because these consume cards are kind of like baits right now, huh? It's kind of interesting, right? Interesting. Interesting. I need to be careful about this because I didn't hit Ashes of the Fallen. Yeah. Yeah, like I need to be watching this. I think we just take... 12 damage shield here. I actually think it's good to battering ram on this turn. Yeah, does two things. I get morsels. And then... I take the damage shield. I mean, this is enough damage. 10 damage shield is enough to win here. We just pump numbers into Seraph here, for sure. Yeah. Draw a card. Sure. I mean, my deck is essentially non-existent at this point. I put 660 into him. Like, this is, looks pretty good to me, right? This looks pretty solid. This, this Imp in a Box was a bait, I think. Impish Scholar. Okay. I will play the Imp in a Box now. As soon as I call it a bait, it's actually good because it puts me an Imp in the floor, which is great. We're not going to be replaying our Imp again, I don't think. So... I'll just take this Imp in middle so it dies. I could give her an Immortal trade. Sure. I'll take the Rail Spike for six. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. It's fine. Take two more damage shield. I think with this damage shield and our damage numbers, we're okay, but it's fine. That's good. I'm just gonna play out the space prisms. I don't wanna hit them. Yeah, fine. Cool. She gets some rounds in, pretty solid. Like, she's never the winning line, but it's okay. I will play my Pyre's Chomper here, huh? Oh, last stand? Don't mind if I do. Do not mind if I do. That secures the hell out of this. Thanks, Pyre Chomper. Very cool. I'm just gonna pump hundreds of damage into him. Pyre Chomper boy gets it. 
I really incanted the hell out of this dude. He's at 71, but he stands no chance against me. Yeah, he stands absolutely no chance. Cool, get out of here, bud. I could have boundering rammed him for 340, but like, I'm not worried. All right, cool. Patient was never a doubt in my mind. I had all the answers. Now comes the real test. My draw order matters a lot here, right? Like this is this is the real concern. My draw order changes everything. Just hit good. It's a pretty good hit, right? I see all my units on turn one. I can then Awoken's Rail Spike out half my deck. 10 damage on top. Yeah. Is this a maybe mid-floor play? I did see the Morsel Maker and an Imp on bottom. So Queen is okay to play on bottom. Take the Queen's Impling here. I think I'm gonna try mid. It's safer and smarter. I'll take the draw three. Sure. Armor, sure. I think I will take the Immortal Trade into her. Helps a lot. I'll take the Prism Retrieval here. All right, Rage Imp. I'll take a Rage Imp here, yeah? She yeets a second Imp is good. That's nice. Okay. Okay. The Life Steal will matter as long as she doesn't get overrun. She doesn't get overrun, which means I can yeet Imp. I'm gonna look in this Imp in a box first. Space Prism middle. Let's me play a Morsel, which really matters. I wanna get that Life Steal in. Yeah, okay, sure, true, 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 true. Take it. HP good. Magma Morsel is kind of a bait. I only get one unit to play, sadly. It's gonna have to be Molting Imp, I think, in the back. She yeets it, that's pretty nice. I can take this Morsel, my Magma Morsel here. It, it swings into the Clip Defender, it's fine. This'll have to do, I leak this man, it's okay. We're not out of it yet. This is the scary wave, but we see the Pyre Chomper of Destiny. What's in my consume pile? Some crap, but it's fine, I think. Order matters. I need to play Pyre Chomper first, I think. I wanted to get thrown. Okay. Pyre Chomper. Molting Imp is probably the best choice here. Wait a second. Hold up. Yeah, okay, right. I, I forgot the Extinguish. I needed to put 10 more HP into her. So I lose that on the imp, on the apex imp in middle, but it's okay. I can pierce out this front dude, which is good. I think it's better than, I'll just let this six damage go. I'm cool with that. I could stop it with the queen's impling, right? I actually should stop it with the queen's impling. No, I can't. Yes, I can. He hits. No, I can't. No, I can't. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's bad. I will take the Lifesteal Morsel middle. It powers up our dude. Abby, I want to kill this guy. What am I drawing into here? Another Queen Zimpling, right? All right, so this is actually good. So here we're going to do this Queen Zimpling here. I can send the jeweler. This looks bad, but here's what's going to happen. I don't have to play. I can play this at zero and be fine. 
We've handled the Harvest Wade. Thank you, Immortal Trade. Yeah, watch this. I do Awoken's Rail Spike up top for drawing of five cards. Cool. I now begin the Rage Scaling on middle. This is matters because I can now Queen Zemplane to kill this other dude. Cool. I put Last Stand in the Consume Pile here. Two Lifesteal left. It doesn't matter how much Ember I have next turn as long as I can play the Pyre Chomper. So I can just give her this Mortal Trade here. Although she will draw into another one in time, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't need this. It's fine. Yeah, 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 it's fine. We just want to send these Morsels. Yep. It's fine. I will last stand here because my Rage sucks right now and I need it to not suck. I will now... Forever consumed middle to kill that dude, and forever consumed middle to kill this dude. Great. And I'll take my two damage shield into where the queen prop. No, she has lifesteal, it's fine. I'll take it into Apex Imp. In the worst case, that at least carries over to Relentless or Spikes now, which is fine. Okay. I think we've navigated this pretty effectively. What a weird run. What a bizarre run. But she got down to 2 HP there, yeah? Yeah, that's nutty. I have to play this immortal trade on her now. Give me armor now, please. Battering Ram is pretty okay. Battering Ram actually kind of like betrays me here because well, let's see what we draw into, right? Yo, it does not betray me. I can draw around back into it. Yeah, 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 watch this. This is nuts. I actually hold on to the Immortal Trade. This is great because... No, I have to play it. It's great because drawing seven... No, I don't have to play it, right? I don't want to put it back in. It means I draw these three imps out. And... My deck is basically just excellent cards. Yeah, check it. Just draw my whole deck, please. Thank you. Hit the right imp. I mean, I hit the right card. Great news. I see this. Excellent. I can now Battering Ram again. What a weirdo run. I'm going to put the imp in back here because I can yeet it. Very good. I'll send the other two up top. Don't need them. I could take damage shield into this morsel. It's actually really good. You may ask why it, protects, it prevents it from dying. One, two, three, four, five. That's three hits. I wouldn't actually stop it, right? Yeah, shame. I for sure am killing this dude in front. Playing a morsel miner. Take my battering ram now in middle. My deck is basically nothing. I have nothing at this point. I need to pull back a bunch of consume spells because I had to play them all to live. So I need to be hitting this last stand every turn now, right? Yeah, I do. I do this and I think I clear the floor actually, excellent. That means he swings in one, two, so I can actually save the imp now, the morsel now. Cool. Cool, okay. Thanks. Sure, 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 sure. This looks pretty good. We're even getting eats. The fact that I managed to play middle is a huge boon here. Yeah, here, we're going to play Chomper. I don't play this imp. I put Immortal Trade into the Queen here, and she's fine, and I just play a bunch of this here, and I take, and I'm saved by my Forever Consumed. Look how bad this is. My scaling is really slow because I had to navigate the run, but this duped Forever Consume just ends this man. That's, you know what, it's what I say, right? You want to draft to solve your problems. That, that's it, right? You want to draft to solve your problems. We do lose our queen here, so I got to be careful about that. 
it is probably Scholar in front then. He dies now, so I gotta be careful about that. I do not... I want to play that. Huh. This floor looks really bad, right? Ten damage shield here is pretty solid. God, I cannot play this excavator. It kills itself on spikes here. This floor looks bad. I need to prismal dust the imp, it looks like. I think I have to, pr to forever consumed Prismal Dust the Imp. Am I seriously going to do that? Yeah, I think so. It, it eats it. Very effective. And now I play Forever Consumed up here. I'm going to leak and it's just going to suck and it's probably just going to be that way, right? I did take the Vapor Funnel. I did take a Vapor Funnel. Oh boy, that's rough. That's tough, right? I play my Pyre Chomper. Yeah, we play Pyre Chomper here. Alright, the Awoken's Rail Spike? Yeah, I think I'm gonna play that. Pretty sure. What does that draw me around into? A lot of stuff. It does draw me around into a lot of stuff. Yeah, sweep, right, of course. Um, it's I have to play the Awoken Rail Spike. Hitting these forever consumed is the lifesaver. Draw eight cards. Means I draw literally everything here. It's pretty good, right? Draw eight. I think I have to draw eight here. I could reasonably play this imp in a box and see what I see. Like, what, are, what can it draw me though, right? Like, molting imp. A transcend imp is the only strong thing. Otherwise, these are all not great. I'm gonna get blasted by these dudes, huh? So I have to hit them. I, yeah, I mean, I just have to roll into my forever consumes, right? There's no way around it. It kills two dudes. Yeah. I'd like to actually draw eight cards, though, so I think I am going to just drop the battering ram here. I can't get it into this man no matter what, right? Like, it doesn't matter. Spell shield. So, send the battering ram at zero, and then we Awoken's Rail Spike for eight to draw everything in my deck. Sure. Seems good. 120 kills this man. This gets killed over here. Yeah, I just play the imps, I get the morsels. I don't want them in my deck right now. Cool. I do want to stop. Oh, it's so important that I kill middle, though. This is what? This represents... Oh my god, this is what, 17? So... They take two swings on me. Vapor Funnel stops one round. So they go to 17 damage here. I take 34. It doesn't kill me. Right? It does not kill me. I think I need to do this here. Forever Consume, because it kills the Dark Wings too. Or it comes real damn close. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Shame about all this, right? I can actually... Hold up. Protect the morsel, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. He just still dies, yeah. Shame he still dies, right? Yeah, he still dies. Do the math on it. Right? One hit. He has one damage shield, so one hit, two hit. Three hit, four hit. I could get him up to... Yeah, sadly. We'll put it in the Apex Imp, I think. Okay. It's just gonna have to be that way. I don't die. That Dark Wings is just dead to... Vapor Funnel, at least, is good. 
I must yeet Imp, so play Imp and back. I eat whatever this dude does, I guess. What's left in here at this point? Last Stand and Prism Retrieval. I have a pretty good shot at it, right? I think it's time for my 14 damage shield. It's a shame I... I could actually roll around to that imp in a box and clean this whole wave up. Huh. I really need to hit. Is this enough to win Relentless? I mean, maybe with 14 damage shield on a dude, right? Like, maybe? Actually? Problem is, he's gonna lose a lot of damage shield here. I think it's actually just putting it into the Apex Imp. And draw around again. I could just kill this man, but I don't think I need to do that much damage here. And I'm never hitting the Dark Wings here, because he's dead to Vapor Funnel. And this guy represents what? I mean, he's doing, let's, oh my god, 125 armor? How did he get so much armor? Alright, let's do the math on this. This dude has an insane survivability. 120 plus 125. That's a 245 lad. Divided by 35. That is 7 swings. He does 49 damage to me, huh? Technically 42 because of Vapor Funnel. Oh boy. Yeah, okay. That is a lad. What's more important? Drawing around again? And seeing this forever consumed? It's actually just the imp in a box, I think. I really only need one hit on last stand. I need to not play a consume spell. I'm going to lock that in. So I take 14 damage shield here. Yeah. I take this man down to kill range. And I don't play the Awoken's Rail Spike. And we accept the 42 I take from the top. Oof, that is a big number. This is my relentless, because I. this is what I'm seeing here. I just need to see one. I just need to see. What do I need to see? I just have to see one, one thing. One, I'm guaranteed to see it if I don't play any consume spells here, right? Because I get it next turn. One last stand is enough here. These guys never go up, right? They relentless on this floor. Yes. Queen, you've got one final job. I just need you to sweep here. Last stand. We did it. Okay. One last stand here changes the entire landscape of this run. Excellent. I think we did it. Cool. And we also get no curses next turn. Great news. We did it. Thank you, 16 damage shield. Very awesome. Woof. I'll take my imp. Thank you. Ah, uh, you show it to me again. I love it when you... I love it when you do good things to me, Monster Train. I'll save my Crucible Warden here. Ah, beautiful. Sure. We did it. Excellent news. Cool. Oof. All right, so lock it in. I would be at one HP right now. I would be dead without the Vapor Funnel purchase. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, that was a good purchase, I'll say. I did not need the Gorge. Excellent. I had enough. He just needed to survive. And Apex Imp is still winning. Right? I mean, this run... This run was some weird nonsense, right? This run... This run does not come close to existing in the base game. Like, me trying to reason through this line in the base game... I don't even know where to begin. It looks so different. But, like, check this out. I've got, like, my Endless Pyre Chomper with a major refraction. Like, he's big. He's 
big. And Apex Imp doing work with a Crucible Collector? Like, when you, when you first look at this episode's thumbnail, you're going to be like, what the hell did he do? Right? Alright, let's send it. That's excellent news. What did I do to deserve this? I mean, we get it, right? Apex Imp wins. Definitely takes a lot more work. He's, you know, strong. But not a game winner automatically like he's not an s tier just destroyer of worlds cool all right well that was that was a bit spooky left and right it's just gonna have to be fine but let's look at the run summary and talk it through right okay so i picked this run and i decided to navigate this because i wanted to show you how a mono hell horned armor setup can support apex imp this was not a particularly good Apex Imp run. But because I had two fortifies, that was just enough with the last stand that I took, right? So the last stand with my Pyre Chomper, Impish Scholar, Insanity, and the Awoken's Rail Spike, like, it was just enough rage to get me going so I could last stand and win. This represented, I mean, our dude basically got to, like, 150 by 2 without this by the end of the combat. So not not amazing, right? But like, again, my only armor card was Fortify. If I had taken that Floor 1 Welder Helper, which I think was just as reasonable a line, there's, there's no way I could have known I would have seen this. I think it was, a, I think it's Crapshoot, right? You could have taken that Welder Helper or that Fledgling Imp. And there were a lot of good justifications for both. I think Fledgling Imp is good because it guarantees an offensive plan. Like, imagine if I had seen that Horned Warrior and no other offensive scaling, right? It's not like I would have done anything with Umbra. So, without the Fledgling Imp, I probably would lose, in my opinion. Like, I wouldn't get there. And I could solve that with, like, you know, plus 25 or Damage Shield 3, Endless Fledgling Imp or something, and be okay. Maybe, like, some other problems, like, I don't know, Light's Gift. I would have probably taken the cave-in they showed us and solved it that way and been okay, right? There were answers, right? With the Fledgling Imp line, if I did not see something that scaled. But then they showed me something that scaled, so I was like, oh, damn, you know, I wish I had that Welder Helper instead, right? There's no way I could have known, so. But it's fine. Uh, this, this looks absolutely better with Welder Helper because you infuse the Welder Helper into the Impish Scholar here, right? And then you just take Ember somewhere along the line, and you probably don't major refraction your Imp, but uh, it looks very different, but I think it still gets there all the same. Uh, Vapor Funnel was an important purchase. It saved my life, right? I would have taken an additional 28 from the Light Harnessers, which would have put me at 1 HP, and I would have been killed by that absolutely massive Clipped Reflector if I had not taken the Vapor Funnel, right? He would have hit me for an extra seven. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, wow. Pyre HP, it matters, right? Like, treat your Pyre well. Hell Pact was fun. I opened up a lot of really cool stuff. It made my Prismal Dust just ridiculous. A uh, 2x minus two Prismal Dust is crazy strong this was so good i mean you saw patient patient was trivialized and then as i expected the divinity was a nightmare to navigate and truly you know i took a bunch of random consume spells that were a bit spooky but think about it every single one of them mattered in the divinity every single one even prism retrieval i pulled something useful like that imp in a box saved me twice because i had to just like survive and throw an imp and then I fortified my queen because she was only living by 2 HP. And I forgot about the extinguish trigger. And a 10 HP from the armor was just enough to save her. Like, the landscape of this run was made by things like starting immortal trades and fortifies and just everything I saw. Every card mattered. And it was tight. It was a tough run. But we get there. So, yeah, rock on. Feels good, man. And that's all I'm going to say there. I've already taken a lot of your time. This has been a long episode that I think was tough to navigate, but very fun to watch. I think it, I think it's a good one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. 
So yeah, hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. You know, as always, give the video a like or a dislike if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more nonsense like this. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.